Hello, this video is for students taking IPC 144 at Seneca College. In this video, I will be writing a program that will uh, print out the text Hello World to the screen. Uh, and I will go over the pieces of a C program in that process. Now, the Hello World program begins with a line that says number include stdio.h. And what the statement does is it includes the standard input-output library for us. Uh, the reason we need the statement is because the C language actually has a very small core. And in order to support um, more advanced functionality, it has a number of libraries uh, that we can use. So if you wanted to do input-output, you would include the standard I.O. library. If you wanted to do some math and you want support for that, you would include the math.h library. Uh, if you were handling a lot of strings, you would include the string.h library, character data, there's uh, C type. And so there's a whole bunch of libraries that the C language includes that will actually allow you to uh, do things a little bit easier. So in this case, we are going to be making use of a function called printf, which is uh, written as part of the standard I.O. library. So every C program has a function in it called main. Now, a function is simply a block of code that accepts some data, gives something back, and does something in the process with that data. Now, our program, in this case, accepts no data. That's why it says void here. So um, the main function is sort of special. And there are different ways that you can write it. But uh, for us, we will always use void here in this course. In third semester, you will learn about how you can actually give data to the main function. But we will not be covering it in this class. So for our purposes, it will always say void in those brackets. The int here refers to what the main function will give back to the operating system. So when you run your program, when you type a dot out or whatever your executable is called, what happens is it will actually go into the main function and begin looking at the code inside main and start executing that program starting with the main function. The main function has to be exactly spelled this way. You cannot have a main function with a capital M. You cannot have a main function that is not called main. It is. It has to be called main, spelled all lowercase m-a-i-n. So this particular program, all we're going to be doing is we're going to be writing to the screen, hello world. So printf, double quote, hello world, exclamation mark slash n is how we would do it. And at the end, we stick a semicolon. Now let's take a look at what this did. This part, printf, refers to a function that will print do the output for us. So what it is saying is, I want you to print something. What do I want you to print? Well, it's this thing that is inside the bracket. Now, the thing that we put inside the bracket is a what is called a string literal. And a string is pretty much um, a number of characters together. So we call that a character string. And the string that we're printing out is hello world with the slash n character at the end. Now, the reason why this says slash n is because when I finish printing hello world, I want it to go to the next line so that my prompt doesn't show up at the end of the exclamation mark. If I don't have the slash n here, my command prompt will actually show up after the exclamation mark, and that'll look kind of weird. So this is essentially the return character, the, the new line character. I cannot simply hit the return key here, because then my code would look like that, and it would look kind of funny, and it, it also wouldn't work. So in order for me to say print a new line, I have to do it like this. Uh, there are a number of other characters that you cannot simply type in by pressing the key. So for example, the tab character, you cannot just hit tab and expect that the program will print it as a tab for you. You have to use slash t to indicate that it is a tab. So that's pretty much how we would do hello world. After that, we will want to add another statement that says return zero. Now the return character means go back. 
and it will go back to the thing that made a call to main. In other words, your operating system. So from your command prompt, you ran your program. And now that your program is done, you're going to tell the operating system that everything finished and everything went OK, which is why it's returned 0. Uh, if you have another, usually you use 0 to indicate that everything went well. And if something went wrong, maybe you would return some other value. But for our purposes, we know that our program will not have any problems with it, so we will simply return 0. That's it for this program. Thank you very much.